when we think about economics, um, for example, nitrogen is one of the um, inputs that is very costly. The simple example that I we give our growers during this presentation, if you have a thousand dollars that you want to put in nitrogen inputs, it, it makes no difference for your cost for your pocket if you put that nitrogen up front or you split it into application. But it will make a lot of uh, difference in how the plant uses that and how it will impact your capability to gain yield. You know, the one thing that we've seen locally is that we've actually been able to um, cut some of our nitrogen application um, pound-wise down. So we're, we're actually saving, saving the grower money without costing yields. Um, as Karina said, you know, nitrogen is one of our highest costs as an input, but what if we can help you manage that by you know, backing, backing that uh, nitrogen rate down to a point where you're not gonna lose yield. You know, when a grower drives by their field and it's yellow, they start worrying, right? Oh, I need more nitrogen, I gotta get nitrogen out there. How many times does that grower drive by that same field on the year it's green, fence row to fence row and say, I wonder if I put too much nitrogen on. So we think we know what it takes to produce a bushel of corn from a nitrogen standpoint, but how do we know we're not too high? How do we know we're not over applying? Historically, we knew that um, it takes 1.2 pounds of nitrogen to apply for every bushel of corn that you need. What we are learning now in the last 10 years, it actually takes, takes much less of that. It takes 0.8, sometimes even 0.7 pounds of nitrogen. And the reason for that is because we start implementing these best management practices that allows us to maximize the use of that input and also growing yields. Corn uses nitrogen throughout the whole growing season. We cannot say that uh, in early vegetative stage, corn will use the most nitrogen. 37% of the nitrogen is actually used post-flowering. That being said, applying a split application, one in a fall, and applying another application around V5, V6, will give you that additional nitrogen that will give enough nutrient for the plant growth. Fall application of nitrogen, um, although it's, it's somewhat simple, isn't always our best answer. We have to worry about uh, leaching and denitrification. Um, those, are, those are two things that you know, can be detrimental to raising a crop, and that's, that's where I go back to, uh, you know, let's make two applications, let's split apply. It mitigates that risk of putting it all down either in the fall or pre-plant. What we know that nitrogen moves through the soil profile through mass flow, which is with water. So any heavy rain in a spring, flooding, it will facilitate that nitrogen being lost within the soil profile. Part of the best management practices are to, you know, be more cognizant of how we apply, when we apply, um, and you know, we, we talked earlier about economic impacts, but you know, there's also environmental impacts that we need to be aware of. One of the most important things that we're conveying to, to the growers is uh, just be aware of, you know, what's going on in, in your surroundings, whether that's uh, at a local level, township, county, um, or even you know surrounding states, what's happening? Uh, what kind of regulations are out there on nutrient management, and how could that possibly affect you know your operation moving forward? I think that's that's probably the the biggest key that we're trying to get across. In the case of, of my growers that I work with, we're, we're using variable rate technology. That's, that's also a big tool that we can use to better manage our, our nutrient placement, um, as well as maximize the return on the investment.